In this video, I want to go over a cross-platform image viewer called KIMV. And then that might not be how to be pronounced it, but here is the GitHub website. There's the creator, and there's the name. But I'm going to call it Q Image Viewer, and the reason I'm going to call it that instead of KIMV. And when I went to the how to pronounce, when I clicked on that, it says KIMV. I think that sounds kind of crazy, so I'm just going to call it the Q Image Viewer. Because if you look Q Image Viewer, QT5 Image Viewer, and it has optional video support, you have to install an additional file to give it that optional video support, but it's not hard to do. Now, it's very active. As you can see here, it was lastly updated two months ago. And if you want to install it for Windows platform, you can click on my website. I do have the links. This is for your 64-bit systems. This is for the 32-bit on your Windows system. And also, for Windows users, you can download the installation files for 32-bit or 64-bit, along with the additional codecs to allow you to see the video file. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the GitHub and I'll provide a link below this video if you found the video on YouTube that gives a brief description how to install it and then I show you some of the basic editing features and shortcut keys that you have with this image viewer. It's a very nice, slick, elegant image viewer and here's some of the key features. You can, uh, you've got cropping, flipping, rotate and resizes. Uh, you can do quick copying and moving. You can play video support with the addition of installing that file to your system. You can run shell scripts. You've you can change to folder view. You can uh, you allow you to move through keyboard shortcut keys rather than just using your mouse on your display. For those of you that like shortcut keys, and it allows you to view raw file images from your cameras. To install it, you just open up your terminal, copy that uh, where you're adding a PPA to your system, paste it in there, press enter return, put in your password, then update your repository, and then you're going to go sudo at install qimageviewer, which is qimgv, and then now there's the releases. Those are from your different links that I had up in your browsers where you can download them if you're on the Windows platform. To remove it, you just remove the PPA and remove the program itself. Here's some images that I have showing you how you access the menu, how you have your folder view or your thumbnail view. And then here is a little slideshow showing what it looks like. And here's a slideshow looking through the different parts of your settings. So if you don't want to install it, want to look at it first to get comfortable, then if you think you want it on your system, you can scroll up and install it. These are different ways of zooming, control up or control down control with your mouse wheel or hold down your right mouse button while moving up or down will allow you to zoom in and out. Now by default when you're in full screen mode if you hover over the top of your image it will show thumbnails of other images in the same folder. Uh, here is what the preference menu is. I show you how you can change like your thumbnail panel. You can make it only on full screen. That's the default. You can turn that off so when you hover up at the top you see the small thumbnails on your smaller image. It doesn't have to be only on full screen but it's only default by full screen so that if it's a small image you won't see thumbnails on a very small image. It takes up a lot of your image. You can crop something by putting your resizing. You can type in the width and hit OK or I'll show you you can use your mouse button to crop like you see here. You can drag over a particular area, hit crop and then save it or save as to give it a new name. You can rotate your images, uh, you can copy or move to different folders and here are the shortcut keys and after I upload the video on YouTube I will provide a link uh, that you can download the PDF file so that if you want to memorize those you won't have to keep going to my website. Now remember this is customizable so you can come in here and change that to meet your needs of how you use the shortcut keys. Now let's actually take a look at what the Q image viewer looks like. Now by default I still have I have uh, my I have Mate as the default because I will compare them with the animated GIFs and the WebP images in this folder with my default image viewer. So now I'm going to go open up with Q Image Viewer. Now my last video I did Q View that looks very similar and they have a lot of the same features. So if you've just using your default image viewer for both Windows or Mac or not Mac, QView will I think install on Mac but Q Image Viewer, the one that we were looking at, is only a cross-platform with Windows and Linux but it's nice. 
for either platforms. Uh, if you go through with your right arrow key, you can advance to the next image. You can press the back button and it, and it changes quickly. There's no little bar showing them that it's loading. And these are not very small images. As you can see, they're 1920 by 1080 and that's the resolution of my screen. So it fits very nicely in here. Now you can access the menu by right clicking. This right here, for some reason, if you have different size images, uh, when you moving you might have a black bar above and below you can say fit to window or if it's a black bar all the way around you can fit the window if you have some black bars on either side you can say fit to width you've got the zoom in feature you got the zoom out feature you got the zoom in from the center then you can zoom back out you can rotate your image and for each of these commands here you see there's shortcuts you can rotate your image left you can rotate your image right you can uh, flip your image horizontally you can flip your, uh, let me go back horizontally, you can flip your image vertically and I'm going to discard the changes here. You can crop an image. When you crop an image you can put your width, your position, uh, you can go put your aspect ratio or you can drag your mouse pointer over it and then that way when you press the enter key it will crop this image and bring you up a dialog box allowing you to save the image or to save as when you save it, it overwrites the existing image. When you save as, it will allow you to give it a new name. So I'm going to back out of here. Here you have uh, a resize, so you can resize the image, or you can do a quick copy, a quick move. Now when you resize the image, you can come in here and you can put the ratio, the width and height, and say keep the aspect ratio. If you want to change it, kind of stretch it out, you uncheck keep the aspect ratio, because when you put a width in, if you're trying to put a different height it will automatically change your width to put in the one that you want you have to uncheck that and it may appear to be stretched like silly putty when you pull it out you can resize to some common sizes here that you can click on you can say fit to desktop or you can reset it back to your image uh, so that if you forgot what it was there's a reset button goes back to your original setting now when you right click and choose quick copy or quick move it's going to bring you up a little folder now when you first do that these folders are not assigned I think they have your name on them from your home folder and you have to assign them what folders for example if I don't want to put an image in my videos folder I can change this folder name and location by clicking on the folder icon and it will come up and then I can go into like my picture folder and if I want to uh, if I'm dealing with with something around Christmas time and I want to put my Christmas wallpapers here I hit Christmas wallpapers I hit open and now the video link changed to Christmas wallpaper the icon shortened itself or kind of truncated itself because the name of this particular folder is larger than the space here and it truncated the name there so if I wanted to save this picture in my Christmas folder since it's copying I would click the name or I'd press the number four and it would put this particular picture in that folder now if I wanted to go back and change it again I could go back to my uh, name I could go back and locate my videos folder the ones that you saw that had dots were hidden files I can go back and hit open and now my Christmas folder is now back to my videos folder so you can choose and you can create folders on your system and change the locations by clicking on the folder names but to copy it to you click on the name of the folder or you press that number on your keyboard the same thing with moving when I click copy uh, move to you can change your folder names by clicking on these folders or you can click on the names of the folders to move this picture from this location into the new location. That's very nice. Here you got move to trash or press the delete key on your keyboard while the image is active on your screen. You have an open feature, an open folder view feature, which in the folder view you got your thumbnails and as you can see the thumbnails are kind of truncated off the size but you can change the size or the looks of your thumbnails by dragging this little image viewer to change the sizes of your thumbnails. It kind of gives you a quick overview of what these images looks like from the center. You can go back to your normal view by clicking here, go back to folder view. You've got your settings that you can click in the upper right hand corner or click it in your menu. Here's your general appearance. You can say to start your image in full screen by clicking this. Now by default it says to enable the panel, uh, crop thumbnails to squares. If you don't want to leave the look to squares, you can hit apply, hit OK, and then when you go back to your thumbnail view, as you can see, they're not squares now. They actually look like miniature versions of your actual wallpaper. So if you wanted to see the whole image, you would just, where it says crop to thumbnails, you just uncheck that 
and you can double click to take it out of full mode or you can press the escape key. Now when I hover over the top you don't see the thumbnail. You can take that feature you can change it, say only in full screen to check that, hit apply. Now when I hover over it you can see the thumbnail, but in a small view it takes up a huge amount of space on your image. So I'm going to go back and say only in full screen mode. Now in your settings you have other features. You, there's lots of features here like video playback. If you install the additional codec file and if you install it on Linux it should pull in that file. If not I can uh, have the instructions for installing that file allowing you to see videos where you can watch mp4 files within the image viewer or the new WebM format or WebP format which is animated images uh, the newest type of animated images not just your GIF or GIF file or GIF file here you can change the appearance what it looks like the colors of it you can change your folder view colors like when I brought up my folders they were gray you can change them to any color you want you can change your scaling from smooth scaling and smooth animated you can take those off if for some reason when you advance to the next picture if you have smooth scaling on sometimes it might appear a little blurry and then uh, it smooths out you can uncheck that or if you need that you can check it dependent upon your system you here's your shortcut keys and that's those are the ones that I have on my website you can add a make additional shortcuts you can come in here and change the shortcuts or you can restore them back to their defaults you can add scripts to make this more powerful. If you've got additional advanced features for smooth scrolling and you got the about that gives you more information about the creator and about the add-ins that you install. So it's not a very very powerful editor. It's just a very powerful image viewer. Now let me show you what makes it so powerful. Let me go back to my wallpapers folder and you saw it works very good with JPEGs. Even the default image viewer which is my eye of mate it works great for typical JPEGs. Let me go to animated GIFs or animated GIFs. I'm going to start with the circle image here. With my eye of mate, that worked great. But watch what happens, and I did this in my last video with QView. When I go from the animated GIF file of my circle, when I go to the hands, notice down here it takes time to load before it gets to the animated GIF file, this animated image. So it does do animated images but it's slower if you look down here each time I go it has to load the full image that was kinda slow that one was but it wasn't too bad this one is the slowest so that is my default eye of mate viewer now I'm gonna open it up with the Q image viewer so I'm gonna go up Q image viewer here and there's the Q view that I did last time here's the Q image viewer there's the animated uh, image there's immediately notice it, there's no loading time it was almost instantaneous so it's much faster than the eye of mate so as you can see here it handles the animated gif files much better than the default eye of mate image viewer now let me go to my web p as you can see here this is web or bp format if i double click it to bring up with my eye of mate and this is the Eye of Mate image viewer, the default viewer for uh, Ubuntu Mate. They haven't updated this in so long to where it doesn't support this new feature. Let me go back to the Eye of Mate, go to help, hit about. The last time they updated this was 2018. So it's been a couple, not almost a little over a year ago, and it doesn't support the Web P format. But if I go open with and I go my Q image viewer, here is the Q image viewer that handles that new format very well. So it does handle the newer image formats. It's very currently updated. As you remember when I started this video, I was on the GitHub website that showed the last time this was updated was two months ago. So this is a very nice little elegant little image viewer. If you're looking just for an image viewer to display your images in multiple formats and it's constantly updated, so as things come out new, the creator is updating it, whether it's a he or she, they're updating it to keep up with the newer type formats. This is elegant, it's nice, it's very minimalistic, so if all you're looking for is a nice image viewer for both Windows and Linux, give the Q image view a try. You'll like it. You know, what I'm doing now uh, over the last couple weeks and probably the next couple weeks is going through and putting new image viewers on my website so over the next couple days if you keep checking on additional software clicking on image viewers you'll see that I'm p p 
putting a list of image viewers for Linux users or anyone that's thinking about switching from Windows. You might be a Windows 7 user thinking about switching over since Windows 7 is no longer being supported. And you and looking at images and editing images is a big priority for you. I'm creating a list of where you used to I would just cram them in like graphics put them in here I'm trying to sort them out to where it's easier to navigate to look for things so here are my image viewers and I will try to start sorting a better organization on my website so if you haven't ever heard of Q image view then take a look at it and if you like it install it and hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day